All right, you should be live. Okay, I'd like to bring the meeting to order. This is the Wakeley Finance Committee slash Select Board meeting. And tonight we have presentations from both the Franklin County Technical School as well as the Waitley Elementary School to discuss budget requests. Prior to that, um, we need to do a little bit of housekeeping here. And first, um, we'd like to um, approve the minutes from the last meeting. Do I have? We can motion we approve the minutes of the February 21st meeting. Second. I have a second? Second. Let me jump in. Are there any issues with those with those minutes from anybody for any reason? Okay, we need There's to- just one minor Jim. change in the highway department. If you could move that comma over to reflect the, the correct amount. There's 40 some thousand, it should have been 400 some thousand. Good pickup. Okay. That's the only one. Very good. Okay, we'll take a roll call vote. Start with Donna? Yes. I. Dan? Yes. Jim? Yes. Myself? Yes. Tommy? Yes. Okay. Is there anybody on Zoom from the Finance Committee? There it is. Brenda? Hi. Brenda, how are you doing? Let me back. Sorry, Brenda. Okay. I'm going to call you down, bro. Brenda. Brenda. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. I voted aye. Very good. Okay. Let's get on with tonight's business. Um, first, we have Franklin County Technical School, and I see the gentleman in the back. And could you please come to the table that's uh, in front here? Thank you. Um, Ryan, what kind of time frame did you give these people? Uh, so I think, what did I say, 10, 15 minutes? Yes, sir. Okay, that would be yeah, wonderful. That's, that's very helpful. Okay, before you get started, just, just to let the people at home know um, what this is about. This is Franklin County Technical School. Franklin County Technical School has a budget request, total, total assessment for 24 of $6,792,395. Their request of the town of Waitley is three hundred and sixty three dollars three hundred and sixty three thousand six hundred and twelve dollars for an assessment change of sixty two point four one percent along with an enrollment change of sixty nine point two three percent so we have far more students attending that school and obviously the um the assessment has changed so, gentlemen, could you please introduce yourself to, because there are many people online watching this meeting. Yeah. Yes, I'm Rick Martin. I'm the school superintendent director at Franklin County Technical School. Uh, Russ Culver's business manager at Franklin County Tech. And let's go around the table. Dan Kennedy, I'm... Jim Perkins at our finance committee. Paul Antea, finance. Tom Maher, finance. Uh, Brian Dominic, the town minister. Fred Barron, select board. And online, we have Joyce Palmer, Fortune, who's a select board member. Yep. We have, um, and we have Brenda, who's on the finance committee as well. And Amy LaValle is on as well. Okay. Um, Okay, who, who wants to begin? Rick? Sure, I will go ahead. Um, could I have access? Uh, they said what we called earlier that we could put our presentation on the screen. So if you share your screen on Zoom, okay, you should be able, you should have access to share. Okay. Yeah. And it will show up here, here, there, and here. <laughs> show up everywhere. Uh, Okay, um, the numbers of this chat didn't come in, but I do have the numbers for you. Um, I'm going to get right to the point because we only got about 10, 15 minutes. So we're going to talk about how the assessments impact the town of Waitley. Um, our student enrollment jumped up, I believe, from 13 to 22 in that range. Um, 
And that was um, so something that we thought we would be around 18 when we um, did this a year ago. And there, were, and there was some more applications after that. What you see here in the red is um, what our projection is for next year. So based on our current numbers, we have six students from Waitley that will be um, graduating and we have three applicants. So if we do the math, we have a projection of uh, 2023 to come in about 19 for the following year. Um, our enrollment overall, since you know, we're really talking about um, the impact on Waitley, our in-district enrollment looks like this as follows. Um, our October 1 count was 559 students, grades 9 through 12. We are projecting next year at 572. And that is due in large part to 126 graduates. And we're expecting 160 incoming for the freshman class. Um, then you would say, well, that number should be higher, but we do have out of district students in that pool as well. So our in district should be in the 570 range for next year, somewhere right around there. Um, as far as um, the chapter 70 is concerned, I'm gonna just go right to the face sheet. And let me scroll up. So you'll receive an electronic copy. I think you might have received an electronic copy today from the book for the uh, for the budget book. Okay. And when you get that, you can um, very simply just scroll and find everything. Anything highlighted in blue, you click and it will tell you everything. So the um, assessment to the towns on the top line is uh, a three percent increase. And that's in the far right-hand column. I'll highlight it here. We can really see the highlight. Um, and then we have our charts to give you an idea of the per pupil cost and the assessment to the town trends. Um, anything in the blue, you could just click over. So, um, and then it will take you to that chart. So if we look down here, we look down the weight rate, 22 students. There's the assessment rate as we start to go back up here. The local assessment rate is right here. And it's in that column to the second to the end. Your per pupil cost is sixteen thousand five twenty-eight. The average cost of all fifteen member towns is twelve thousand one twenty-nine. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's a few towns in your category as deemed by um, the formula from the state. Then if you just click in the far left-hand column, we'll take you right back to the funding. And our debt service down here, number two, is uh, on our old windows, doors, and roofing project. Our Chapter 70A came in um, a little bit higher than last year by about 300 something thousand. Um, but actually, about 400 something thousand. Our DOE cherry sheet, how we find that information. If you look at that number in our regional transportation, as you can see, our regional transportation number actually dropped even though the percentile has gone up um, for the, from the governor's numbers. So if I look at the DOR cherry sheet, which is right here, those same numbers you'll see here and here. And, and if you needed to find out just for transparency's sake, how we receive those numbers, we simply click on the link below and it will take you to the Department of Ed. It will take you right to the Department of Ed site. I click on Franklin County Tech. I press submit, and the numbers we just showed you are right here on the cherry sheet. So, that, I mean, so we want to try to be very transparent within the budget just to make sure that um, everyone's aware where we received our information from. And then uh, on the last few things, and I know we don't have a lot of time, so our transportation did take a little bit of a dip on that. We have tuition from non-member towns. And uh, tuition cap, our other revenues, and our access to deficiencies. And on the bottom part of the screen, I'm going to uh, let the business manager take um, that aspect of it just to let you know some of the things we're doing to students in Waitley um, uh, twice the amount of cost to go to a agricultural school at Smith. Uh, we did start a veterinary program, um, and we've already had students from Waitley in the program. Uh, so it's saving kids because um, there's no extra transportation cost or anything associated with that. We, we just get the per people rate. If you just go over to Smith, you're going to pay about 50 grand total for like everything. So mm -hmm. we're trying to go a little bit closer in that direction.
We are also starting in, um, we received a $4.2 million grant where we are going to be constructing an aviation hangar and an aviation mechanics technician program because we do abut the 8,000, we share an 8,000 foot property line with the Turner Falls Airport. So we're trying to address some of the needs that we see around the state. So, um, Russ, you want to take the bottom half? Yeah, I'll do a back of the matchbook cover um, synopsis of the expenditures. Total expenditures for us, our total budget, we're not four and a half percent. Our total ask from our 19 towns averages 3%. So we look for a 3% increase in our town assessment. The rest of the funds, we are a growing school. We've grown 20% in enrollment from about 460 dumping kids to 560 student district kids over the last five years. So we're in full growth mode. We get help from Chapter 78. So we don't need to rely as heavily on our member towns as we have in the past. Most of the increases in the expenditure categories that you see down here are, I can give you the same answer for almost every line. That's enrollment driven. So transportation, enrollment driven. We're looking at two years ago, we added a contingency for an extra bus route. So we're going to continue with that contingency in this current budget for an extra bus route. Same, we've added some teachers. We've added third teachers in electric in our electrical program, a third teacher in our welding program. So again, it's all all enrollment driven. Our costs for plant and operations and maintenance have gone up. Enrollment driven. We've taken our assembly hall, put up four temporary walls, and created four classrooms out of the assembly hall. So we're bursting at the seams. Stop banging the doors here. The main thing I'm that we'll be showing is you'll see line item number 10 called rental lease of equipment. Stevens Building Technologies project for a uh, performance contract for energy savings. That mm -hmm. contract has ended. Oh. notes or whatever from the member towns. Once we get into the feasibility study stage, that's going to take at least a year to happen for them to come out. Architects, engineers, educational specialists will come out and visit us. They'll give us a schematic design of the building and some rough estimates. At that point, when we get rough estimates, a year or so from now, we'll be able to come up to your capital committees in all of our member towns and say, here's a rough guess of what we think the project's going to cost. Here's a rough guess of what the state's telling us they will reimburse us. So for past track record, we did a small project that we got MSBA funding. We got 73 cents on the dollar back from the state for that project. So we're going to assume we're somewhere in the 70, 75 percent. Okay. So that those are the most important highlights on the screen. And as you said earlier, your assessment is enrollment driven. Mm -hmm. It's not because right. you're enrollment. Exactly. Um, thank you very much. Thanks for coming in this evening. And um, we always appreciate um, the both of you here because uh, we know you have a lot of towns and you have to go see a lot of people. You don't have to, but I know that you do. Um, I just have a couple of, before I get into this, anyone around the table would like to ask questions concerning Franklin County Tech? Okay. Um, let me ask you right now, what's your capacity for students? Total capacity. 672. 672. And when you have that new building, what, what do you think? They're going to tell us. Um, okay. You know, we're going to submit what what we feel our enrollment trends are doing and have been doing. Yeah. And then what our capacity will be based on the number of Chapter 74 programs. Uh -huh. We are adding another Chapter 74 program, which yeah. will allow a little bit more capacity. Um, but we're not sure exactly. Uh, we're going to guess around 650, as high as 700 will be somewhere in that ballpark. Wow. Okay. Um, regarding um, staff, 
Um, what's your cola for the staff? We're in dot three percent. Three? Yes. And when I look at um, teaching staff, administrative staff, support staff, I'm going to break it down in those three buckets. Okay. What's your administrative costs? <laughs> Our administrative um, costs range between two and three percent. Um, and our parents range around the same. Our teachers are a little bit higher because yeah. of the contrast. Okay, so when I look at your bottom line here and what you're asking for all the towns, what, what percentage of that money goes to administrative costs? What percentage of that? Uh, it depends on how you're defining administrative costs. If you use, if you look at the bottom of this screen, yeah. district leadership and administration is the DESE functional category for administrative costs, but that's salaries, office supplies, school committee supplies, whatever, okay. right? Yeah. So that, that'll give you a rough average. Over the five years that we've expanded in our enrollment, yeah. administrative costs have gone up. If I take the five-year snapshot, they've gone up about 21%. Instructional costs, because again, enrollment's gone up 20 some odd percent, instructional costs have gone up about 31% mm. over that time frame. Wow. And that's adding, personnel into some of the classrooms. And one of the big things with administrative costs right now is that we were granted a $660,000 um, career technical institute grant, which uh, we are starting evening programs. We started them in the mm -hmm. fall, we'll continue them in the um, spring. Some of the things that are not covered in that is administrative oversight of all the evening programs that are now starting up. And that's to try to get adults in the area, yeah. the skills they need to be employed in the area. So how how many looking at teaching staff? How many bodies do you have? We have approximately sixty teachers. Fifty. Sixty. How, how about um, instructional aides? Do you have any? In uh, the, we have in that um, five. Five. And then we have two in the both world, so a uh, total of seven. Okay. And when you look at your administrative individuals, how many would you consider be to be in the administration total bodies? Well, we have, we have an assistant principal. <coughs> we have a dean of students that we added to the enrollment. We have a superintendent, a business manager, uh, pupil personnel, a director who heads up guidance and special education instead of the two administrations. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a vocational director. We used to have a vocational and a curriculum director, mm -hmm. but we haven't got that curriculum director position back yet. So that would be our core group that yeah. oversees. So it doesn't, there are, there are problems. Okay. About seven. Okay. Um, regarding, um, regarding <clears throat> students, um, when you think about last year's graduating class, and I don't know if you track this, you probably do. Um, well, those that graduate, what percentage go into the trades or get jobs in the trades that they train for while in your school? So they've been um, fluctuating drastically. We do have to track it to our Perkins grant. So we're greater than 50 to 75%, depending on a given graduating class. Um, it's been as low as 40, as high as 80. Um, it kind of depends on the individual graduating class, but that's kind of been our range. Yeah. And we have to report on that for our Perkins grant gotcha. after that. Sure. Just a side note. Um, do any of your graduates go on to two or four year colleges? Yes. Any any numbers around that? For uh, we had like 11 about the previous year. Um, I think we had, had a high of about 25 or 30 students before. Really? So, but it does vary. Okay, very it's good. Because our two year schools, um, you know, for a lot of our kids are going to Lincoln Tech or some of the two year technical colleges yep. to enhance their trade. Okay, great. Um, just my last question this is just <clears throat> look, my plumber told me this, so I'm just throwing this out there. Okay. Is it true or is it not true? Upon, upon graduating, do any of the students receive a toolkit? They do. Um, in I don't know if it's in plumbing. I don't know if it's 
but those are done through donations. Some years they get them, some years they don't. It depends on the individual company that's doing the donation. All right. Well, that, that answers that. Very good. Sounds, uh, you guys have a good program up there, and uh, we wish you continued success. And um, thank you. Can I, can I ask a question to her? Um, do you have a, um, um, like a step plan or a pay classification plan? Uh, you mean from in negotiations for either in your teachers' contracts or for yeah. non-union staff? And what what amount are the steps in each? Two? I'm gonna have eight steps. Yeah, uh, it used to be sixteen, but they consolidate them down, so they made the money steps. Yeah, a little bit. And what's more what's the percent increase between the steps? Is what I was trying to get. Willy nilly. So over the years, ballpark. Is, this year. So, the cola and a step is what? Six, well, I mean, if it goes horizontal, no, just going down. Uh, well, if you're going by, by step five to step if six. you're going down, it's between one and three percent. If you're going over, it can be yeah, five to seven go. percent. It depends on where that employee is. So changing lanes is if they get a degree, master's right. degree. Right. Right. That's going that's going horizontal, but yeah, just right. going down. Let's down. say, yeah, for, let's, you, let's say you work there. This year, so now you're. Do you move each year with the stuff? Yes. If you've met the until you, know, you hit year eight, once you hit year yeah. eight, you're then maxed. you're just then you're maxed up. So it's one to three percent on top of the cold coal. So right? yeah. So for most years, you're talking five, between five and seven percent. Like I said, some some steps may be skewed to eight percent or something like that. But on average, if you look at five or seven percent, then somebody moves down the scale. Okay. Thank you. I get a question. I'm, look, <clears throat> I'm looking at the assessment per pupil and the four towns in the frontier district are paying the most. The only one that's paying close to what we're paying is Irving. Everybody else is 12, 13, 15, 14, 16. Deerfield's paying 18, eight. Conway's paying 19. Sunderland's paying 18480 and we're paying 16528 Why are our numbers so much higher than, you know, Buckland, Heath, Leiden? Is it because the state says we have the ability to pay? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> and that's, uh, you know, the state considers the town of Waitley as wealthy, as wealthy women, wrestling over sure. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. I agree. Live here. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So I put that assessment sheet up so yeah. people can see. Um, it. Just as a final comment, um, and we wish we had gotten this to you sooner, and we wish we had gotten the full budget packet sooner. Um, it puts us at a very, um, just puts us in a bad spot to be able to address issues if we cannot see the line items and what led up to a certain budget request. And the delay we had is one of those strange years when there's a change in the governor's office. We generally get the governor's numbers at the end of January. We spit the books out about a week later. We got the governor's numbers Friday. Okay. So we got them out sooner than we would normally have gotten them out normal in a normal year. You would receive the books within, you know, one week of the time we get the yeah. governor's numbers, and it wouldn't be an issue. Well, in future years, we are hoping to uh, help with that issue because we're going to be pushing our town meeting back. So this meeting won't necessarily happen now, but will happen a little bit further on in the year. Sure. So hopefully. That'll help. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'd like, I got to make sure I stop sharing so that I don't yeah. take this with me out the pocket. All right. I think we're good there. Thank you. Thanks again. Okay. We have 625. 625. We can now move towards Waitley Elementary School budget. So whomever would like to participate, we have two chairs here. You can bring more chairs up. And cheers. We have you. Hi. How you doing? Good. And we have 
Yeah. It's for the people at home. Yeah. Please um, introduce Eric Best of Superintendent of Schools. And I'm Shelley Frieda, the Director of Business Administration. Very good. And we also have we also have the principal of the Whitley Elementary School. Could you identify yourself, please? I'm Chris Eric, and I'm the proud principal of Whitley Elementary School. Very good. And we have the Whitley School Committee back in the right-hand corner. Could you identify yourselves, please, for the people at home? Maureen Nichols. Bob Howell. Bob Friday. Very good. And I don't mean to exclude this. Allie Rice, uh, speaking about this at Whitley and building revenue. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Okay, um, the Wakeley Elementary School, for the town of Wakeley purposes, um, they are requesting for next year $1,966,404 for an increase, a yearly increase, of $77,720. Percentage change is 4.12. That's what they're asking from the town of Wheaton. Um, we have the budget in front of us that was sent by Shelly. And I, I just want to thank you. It's nice, I mean, very concise. And I know you guys probably worked on it for a long time. Um, um, but I do have to say that it makes it difficult for this kind of a committee to boil down some of these numbers and where they came from. So there's no line items. Is there a line item budget as well? Did you get the line item? You have some copy. Maybe. Which one are you talking about as a line item? Yeah, you have that. I have that? Yeah. This? I think so. So this is the same thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, no, no. No. So category by category. Okay. So <clears throat> let me give you an example. Okay. Um if I look at library media center, and I see a number there of $87,579. What does that mean? What's in the library media center that is eight hundred? dollars that is 87,000, really for this year, 89,271. See, that I don't know. That I can't tell. Is that, <coughs> is that salary? Is that um, IAs? Is, uh, is it? materials what is it now i know you can explain it here. I, know I know you can but when we're home yeah so but what is the district responsibility this is how we have to report to the state so this is how we create right. books in compliance with how we have to report to the state mm -hmm. so we're not going to create a new book of charter accounts to present we're going to present the charter accounts we, we submit to the state Years ago, saying he would have liked to have seen the line by line item beneath the function, so to break out the 80,000 by excess salary, excess supplies and materials, excess copy. Excess. When I get when we get central office expenditures, okay, central office wages budget, business office. What does that mean? 362,000. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to be a wise aid here. It's just that when you look at these numbers, there isn't a great deal of transparency so that, you know, we can come to this meeting and go, well, in the business office, why did um, Toner go up 800%? You know, it's something, and I'm being a little facetious there, but the point is that we can't boil it down and we can't take a hard look at it. That we're not going to solve that here. It was just this, just an, an example of what what happens when we're home and we take a look at these. So, so I can appreciate where you're coming from and understand that you would want to see greater detail. 
And we're talking about a 4.12% budget increase that is level funded. The only increases in here are for salaries and wages and um, sick buyback based on the contract for retirement. So, yeah. If there Good. were more to discuss, sure. I, you know, maybe okay. yeah. that's warranted. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're really talking about fifty-seven thousand dollars in salaries and wages, which is primarily increases for contractual wages of teachers and IAs, and a retirement payout that we're obligated to pay. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else in this budget that's a significant increase. Um, okay. So we're certainly not trying to hide anything. I don't. <clears throat> I don't suggest that at all. I don't feel that way at all. I'm just telling you from our perspective, when we sit home, we're volunteers, we're on faith. We don't even have a dental plan. You know, so when we give our time to look at this, uh, we'd like to do the right job. And um, so anyway, let's start anew. Okay. And I'll give you the floor. All okay. right. Um, so one of the things that I want to stress as well, we are talking about a 4.12% increase. The actual budget increase is 6.61%. That was noted in the report that I gave you. We reduced the 6.61 to 4.12 by finding another funding source to use. So in the report that you're looking at, um, it is on page one. It should be on page one. I'm sorry, it's on page two. Um, where it says the next to the bottom draft one of the general fund budget was presented to the school committee in January at a 6.61% increase. That is the true cost of our budget increase this year. And again, that includes only salaries and wage increases for contractual and non-contractual obligations, as well as the $20,000 increase for the sick buyback. We reduced that overall increase to the town to 4.12 by moving $47,000 of that original $124,000 increase to another funding source, which is a grant that we only have for a year and a half. So I want to make sure that everyone understands that the actual cost is the $124,000 if we were to put this all on general fund. And I did explain in this report why there's that significant change outside of the contractual um, agreements that we have for wage increases and then the increases for non-salary staff. We are seeing a, a significant change in our revolving revenues for the early childhood program, which is requiring us to move some expenses that have been paid by early childhood tuition onto the general fund because there will not be enough revenue to cover those expenses. We're basically having to cover two positions um, for IAs on the general fund. So that's contributing to part of that 6.61%. So when we originally looked at this, put those positions on general fund, administratively since the January meeting in conversations, we've said, okay, this is not really a palatable number that we want to present to the town. What can we do to make decisions to bring it down? looked at using those ESSER funds, which for anyone that doesn't know, ESSER was funds provided to schools. There's been three phases of it, um, primarily for COVID relief. Um, ESSER 1 and 2, we have exhausted. ESSER 3, we are still working on, and there are funds available. Um, so we're going to help bring that 6.61 down by using that grant. So and that grant we, ends? That, mean, that grant ends September of 25, no, 24. Um, so it's fiscal year 25 that we'll have a portion of time that we can use that money for. Great. Are there any other grants you have in-house from any other funding sources? Oh, yeah. Those are on this spreadsheet for you. You can see um, IDEA is a, a, a um, special education grant. And then there's some small grants not included on this because they really don't support operational expenses per se. Um, and we, we does get some rural aid now that the rural aid plan has changed, but we don't know what that number is going to look like for next year. Um, and historically, we haven't used that to offset the operating budget because the number has fluctuated and Waitley hasn't received it long term. I think this is only the second year 
lately has gotten that funding. Um, and then we do use other revolving funds. So while I'm saying early childhood revenue is going down, we still have some revenue coming in. So we will use that. If you look at the last page of this line by line, um, early childhood will support 76,000 in expenditures. ESSER shows the 48,000 that I just talked about. Um, the IDEA shows another 30,000. And then our school lunch program helps fund uh, school lunch staff and you know, expenditures as well. So if you look at the last column on that report, you'll see the 2.4 is all of our expenditures to operate the school. So I, the other point I want to make is that this, um, I'm going to call it a financial problem because that's how I'm viewing it, is not going to be just a simple one-year issue. If we're seeing a decrease in revolving revenue and we're using a grant that we're not going to have long term to offset the budget increase, this is going to be a problem again next year. Now, we have additional ESSER funds. We're not fully depleting them by using it to support this year's budget. So we can, I think, take advantage of that money for fiscal year 25. But there's going to become a point where I believe forecasting ahead we're going to be talking about a five or a six percent or higher increase to adjust for some of these changes, um, unless we're looking at you know programmatic changes, which I don't think school committee is ready to support at this point. Um, and I know that you all have been very supportive of making sure that the elementary school has what it needs. So. I, I guess if I could bring it back over to the issue. So at our last meeting, school committee, this is not the final budget. We haven't had a public hearing on it. This is the draft of the budget right prior to the public hearing. So this technically can change. Um, and change after the public hearing, obviously. Um, but they wanted the school committee speaking more, so they wanted to have a discussion with the town about the fact that it is coming in higher. We have a way of solving it, but it's only kicking the can down the road. And so we want to make sure that everybody's kind of transparent about what that is. And so I guess if I was to kind of talk about this in an organization way, is there any questions with the current number? Then that last page of our report is our recommendations. And then we can go into... <laughs> Excuse me. We can go into um, that recommendation. Is it no, it is no, okay. no, no, no. Um, These are recommendations on how to solve the next few years, and then we can talk about how much asset money there is and how we can move it around. But I just want to take a step back. Is there any questions on the six point six one? So we don't kind of bounce over. Then we can kind of go forward and talk about what our what our thoughts are on um, how to address that with the town side of it. We're going to need from the town in the future and how sure. to balance with Frontier. So when you speak of the 6.61, that number is reflected in this line item sheet that we have in front of us. 24. Correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah, right. so and that's can... really the front page of the, right. Right, the all the increases are right here in their um, salary. Right. right. I'm looking at this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you'll see that ESSER column on there, Paul, if you look at the last page, you can see the right. 48000 right. If we were to add that back in the general fund, right. it would bring us to 6.61. I think it, it's, um, I think for us, there's far more meaning when we have a more granular conversation um, looking at the line items than the 20,000 foot view, which we will have. And we look at when, when we go back to the commentary. Here. So, does anyone here have any questions in regards to the line items that came in? I want to thank you for getting the budget to us yeah. early, which Franklin County Tech did not do. But that that's fine. Any questions? Okay. Can I ask a I said, same question? I have um because we asked them um, yeah. colas and what's the what's the step differential? Yeah, so cool, teachers that. and IA is the cola is two percent. Um the step for teachers is about just over three. So if someone is stepping, they're seeing a little over five percent total. Um IAs, I just want to make sure it's the same. Yeah, it's right around the same. It's about a three percent step plus the two cola. Okay, and then I have questions about school choice funds. Should I wait? Should we cover that later? Is that going to be part of the discussion later? I, I was thinking. Well, any 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 of those other accounts to help offset will be discussed. And we definitely will talk about school choice. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay. Anyone else? Jim, did you? Okay. Um, with regards to the line item sheets that we have in front of us, um, as I look down those sheets, um, once again, it's not to be critical, but it's just to throw out that it would be it would be helpful, and I know you have them, the percentage increases on these lines. So when um, we have a dollar increase of you know eighteen thirty five, um, what's that reflected in the percentage? But that's fine. Uh, we can do the math. So when I come down here and it's specifically um, in relation to Wheatley Elementary School, um, when you look at administrative technology technology district wide, that's eighty seven thirty. So that's money that goes into a pool that is for the district. Um, can you tell me what the four digit account code sure. is? Sure, one four five zero. Um, so, like Russ said, these categories are set for us by Desi. So that is what Desi calls this function code, and that is the world as a business manager that I live in and recognize this yeah. by. So I can see why that would be confusing. That actually is only the copiers at the school. They call it administrative technology because technically it falls under the principal's line item. Wow. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All righty. When you look at the um, coding there. So um, following down that, um, account number 2110. Yeah. Curriculum 55181. For a 3619 increase. Um, what's in that number? So the curriculum line covers uh, administrative costs that are central office shared, um, and it covers uh, curriculum related expenses directly um, for Waitley Elementary School. So stipends for curriculum development, um, curriculum materials that are special education related and regular education related. Um, so the curriculum director. The early childhood director and then the special education director that is all a central office shared expenditure um two of those are only split amongst the four elementary schools one position is split five ways those fall under there and again this is coding that the state this the is how the state classifies okay. these positions so those positions again are what could you just um special that? education director special ed director uh, curriculum director for Curric early elementary education. Okay. And then early childhood. And early childhood. Uh, do those individuals have any additional um, monies in here for their employment? No. No. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Um, the only other, I'm sorry, let me back up. The only other spot that an expense would show up would be under the central office benefits line. Which is in the five thousand category. Yeah. Um, it's on the second to last for the last page. Insurance for active employees for fifty two hundred code. Okay. They would if they have benefits with us, they gotcha. would have an expense there. But otherwise, okay. they're classified under that twenty one ten. Okay, great. Um. There is a um, school, what does school leadership mean? Uh, so that is principal's office expenditures. So um, Chrissy's salary is in there, uh, support staff. So and if there were an assistant principal, it would fall under that category. School secretaries, um, advertising that Chrissy might have to run for, you know, posting positions, mm -hmm. um, professional development. Uh, supplies and materials for the principal's office, uh, postage, those kinds of expenditures. Okay. Um, can you tell us, you have a substitute teacher line in here, short term, 19475. That seems low. I mean, I don't know. I mean, teachers call out, you know, call them sick and they, you know, for one reason or another. Is that... At one time, I probably would agree with you, but now we can't find substitutes. So Chrissy has to be really creative in yeah. how 
she put subs in the classrooms. Um, yeah. But compared to other schools in the district, this is an amount that's adequate for Waitley. We probably in years prior to COVID went over, you know, here and there, but yeah, not yeah. routinely. Yeah. Okay. How many professionals do we have in the school? Um, staff that fall under the Unit C contract, I believe there is um, 10 and a half FTEs because that also covers if the school has a physical therapist assistant um, and any other uh, support positions in that regard, which they don't have currently, but it would cover like um, an LPN or a uh, occupational therapist assistant, mm -hmm. but they do have a PTA right now. Okay, 10 and a half. Um, okay. um, just going on to the second page quickly, I don't want to be the dead boss here. Um, can I go back for one second? Absolutely, I just want to look at the number before I tell you this. So, the total cost for our paraprofessionals in district is. Two hundred and sixty-six thousand, eighty-one thousand, roughly hits the general fund. All of that other expenditure is paid from other funding source sources, primarily school choice. So if you look across in that line, it's just two sixty-six to all one. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that that's clear that oh, uh, ten IAs do not cost eighty-one thousand no. dollars. Okay. And we um, do use our school choice money. Yeah, um, and I think we're going to get to that in a bit. Okay. Um, okay, so there are on the second page at the bottom 4400, 4450. Okay. Within those lines, you have technology, infrastructure, maintenance, and support salaries. Then you have technology infrastructure, maintenance, and support other. For, so you add the two lines together, you're up around $45,000. Um, how does that, who would, what are the salaries? Yeah, so, great question. Um, so again, this is a DESI separation for whatever reason they broke out actually just a few years ago, the salaries and wages separate from um, expenditures related to technology infrastructure. So the staffing includes the tech director, which is a central office, so our information and technology director, Scott Hall, um, and then any staff in that office as well. So we have a, a senior network administrator, we have a data specialist, um, we have, I don't know what his exact title is, another support person in there. Um, so I believe there are four staff that our central office shared five-way split in that category. And then the uh, 4450 category is any expenditure. So that includes expenses directly for the school um, for network and telecom, as well as central office. So there's a shared component in there as well. So of the 11,000, um, that's in the 4450, mm -hmm. I wanna say about half of it is central office and half is directly related to the school. Okay. okay, that's good. And just what's going on with food services? Yeah. Well, there's, you need a little more specific. There's, there's no. nothing in there. Oh, okay. In the general fund, there's no expenses for right. school lunch. So um, we have put all of the expenditures for school lunch into the school lunch revolving fund. So if you look at the second to last category there, you'll see the wages are $43,000. Yep. Seven hundred five dollars. Yep. That covers weekly share of the food service director, which is a five-way central office split, and then the two staff that are in the cafeteria. Um, <laughs> the food costs are not calculated here; those fluctuate every year, but they're also funded by this revolving fund. Nothing hits general fund, um, and that's a change. In the past, the food service director has been paid from the general fund. Right. Uh, we've been fortunate over the years to build up reserves and save enough money so that we can support salaries and wages from that account. Okay, very good. Now, I may be wrong, but 
no student has to pay for their lunch? Currently, they do not. So who's paying for that? Um, it's subsidized. Federal yeah, I know. In my, with, my, with, with my federal taxes or, you know, I mean. It's, it's both. So there is some reimbursement from federally and then there's some reimbursement from the state. Okay. Um, a good portion of it in the current year is coming from the state because federal primarily reduces, I mean, primarily reimburses based on free and reduced status of a qualified family. The state is covering the difference because it was in their budget in 23 to have universal free lunches for students. But then we go, we look at the tech budget and the, the government says the Whitley has the ability to pay, but we're giving, kid, giving kids free lunch, even though we have the ability to pay for them. I, it doesn't make sense. But are they eating well? That's the question. I think so. I hope so. Once a year, we can round it all up to Hamburg if you want and put it in the freezer down there. And I, I just work there now, Bob. Somebody, you know, you got to talk to my son. So the other thing that might be helpful, Paul, since you're asking about category names, they're not really matching up with what you would think expenses are. Yeah. Like the administrative technology, mm -hmm. you would never know that that's copiers. No. I can send a chart of accounts that Desi puts out to Brian, and Brian can mm -hmm. share it with you all for some light reading. It gives yeah. you some more details on what each of the categories are. Well, I just know that you have to collect requests. You have to collect whatever's needed in the schools and put them into a spreadsheet of some sort. Now, from that spreadsheet, you collate them and bring them into whatever DESI wants here. But prior to the DESI process, there is a spreadsheet. And no, all these we, things- Everything is coded by DESI. Our database follows this exact same chart. I pull in numbers directly into here. We use all of DESI's coding. We have to because if we're required to report to the state. And if we have two different systems, it makes things too complicated. Mm. <clears throat> because 10 years ago, this didn't happen. I can't speak to that. Well, well, Don Scott used I to get a paper, sure. instead of putting it on the computer, Don Scott used to write it down and put it in the yeah. in the filing cabinet yeah. also. Okay. Versus yeah. nowadays. Yeah. I know. I okay. Know um, that's fine. Let's talk about the big numbers now, Mr. Modesto. Oh, who's doing I oh, have, question. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I have two questions. One is about the budget and the other, I think, is correct for as well. Um, you've given us this sheet of central allocated expenses, central office. They don't line up with the DESI categories. It's $219,000. So I'm assuming that these subcategories that you've given us are embedded in the $1.9 yeah, so million, but not in a way that we can actually see. No, them. I had That's to fine. manually That's pull fine. out. So I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, I had to manually calculate this because they separate it out in so many different and then my other question is, um, it's probably more of a question for Frontier, but um, do, you, do you know how many pre K through 6 age children there are in Waitley who do not go to your to the Waitley Elementary School? Can you track that? We, we never see that data. I don't know. I didn't know what I asked. I'm not asking you for the data. I'm asking you to get Google track. Where, where they go? What? Well, the they go? Do know how many children could be in our public schools who choose to homeschool or go to school someplace else? We will know. We know homeschool and school choice to other public schools. And charter. And so charter. We're going to charter. But so we don't know. We don't know. The question I've already always had, and um, Atfield just in the newspaper just reported on a study that they did that gave them the whole picture. So that's interesting, too. Okay, thanks. We do get a little more information um, in from the kindergarten, so we use the census to send out letters to welcome right. the kindergarten and register by such and such date, and then we try and get in touch with anyone who has a person to find out. Right. Uh, they're not in the home yet, and they keep waiting a year, so we have a little more hands on the hand, but it comes with sort of 
secondarily, right? We want to get to the census and we, we try and project numbers and we usually get the most. It's not a whole lot of survey numbers as far as I know. You know, I happen to live next to next door to two children who are your in your cohort and usually go to school in our hands and get this stuff. But it's, it's obviously a bigger issue for the frontier. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, Darius, did you want to? Next step there? Yeah. Okay, so so we come <clears throat> right now that, as I said, the budget in front of the school committee, um, you know, is at, is at 4.12. And that's using $50,000 of investor money. Remaining amount of investor money after that is, um, is $75,000. Okay, then we have to use in the next 18 months. We have until September of the, of the 24 year mm -hmm. to use the rest of it up. Um, and so our our kind of thoughts are, um, and since we put this, the school committee, the school committee, the elementary school committee didn't have the cherry sheets, which came out last week. Yeah. So we able, were able to have start diving into Frontier and see what that looks like. And while Frontier hasn't seen these numbers yet either, um, Waitley is going to come out with a how can I say it? If you were a loser last year, you're a winner this year. And um, the assessment has you folks um, in the positive of over $100,000. Where last year you were negative yeah. 31 coming out of the, the state budget. So, and also your chapter 70 revenue is up by, by $57,000 because you have more students enrolled in school. So that's going to come back around. Oh, that, you, know, uh, it, you know how it does, but it just it, it helps you out this yeah. this year coming up. This year we've been breathe. hearing that for thirty years. Right. Every three years we yeah. get ahead above water. We take yeah. a deep yeah. breath and then we go back down. <laughs> so you know, looking at you know, if you look at the last page that of our that we we handed to you, we are already we had Shelly was able to kind of do some pre numbers, knowing that we, we was probably going to come out on top, but didn't. Can't share that publicly because if she was wrong, didn't want to be the one that was wrong on that. Um, but is it a good year for Whaley Elementary to have a higher percentage? This is our thinking on this. In saving $50,000 for next year's budget of the ESSER money. And again, by doing that, we're not going to be spending as much school choice money. It's a good time to build up those reserves and not burn those down um, at the same time. And then we have an extra $25,000 um, for contingency within what we can, we can do on Essex. So it's very kind of a conservative approach, looking at both budgets coming together. Um, and because really the drivers of anything, reducing the budget we require changing programs. This is all wages. Yeah. You know, and so, um, you know, we don't, I don't think we want to do that. Um, I think everything, it's a pretty mean school. And in the sense of, you just have extra expenses when you have one grade level for every single thing you get to one. It's, yep. it's just probably the same thing that a you know two grade levels or three not grade levels a uh, uh, number of classes per grade number of sections per grade that you know those kind of things and so that was the idea that we had coming forward but it does mean trying to sell a higher than usual number of four point one two um, and I wanted to be clear that it really is six percent and um, just kind of having an understanding that that's you know, we're kicking it down next year. Next year, we'll be able to bring it down again. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, we'll have other moving parts where contracts will be up. This, this contract is uh, will be in negotiations next year. Yeah. Um, and you know, the teachers may be coming and going. The changes in a small school, you know, those kind of things. I mean, those are all kind of numbers that in a couple years out. We don't have that data anymore. So right? it'll put us in the most healthy position going into mm -hmm. the next two years. At the same time, building up our school choice reserves um, so that that's not next year we'll be using ESSER. The following year, you know, we'll have some school choice because the preschool problem challenge is that the number, the amount of revenue coming in from preschool and the amount of needs are in preschool. So, just a reminder because you know, don't talk about this every day, um, preschool is free for those who are receiving special ed services. And in a small school, you, you change that percentage of need. Um, especially, you know, I mean, I think we probably have a handle on that where they, um, you know, where students were not out once other peers and whatnot. Um, so we're seeing a little, we're seeing a small increase in 
special education, which is actually a big increase in the budget, because now you have people entering preschool that are not paying tuition. Mm -hmm. And so we have to offset that as a school. Mm -hmm. And so then we have school in the general budget after we burn any reserves that we have. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little more about that? Or so that's also one of the things that we're seeing in a couple of years down the road that we're going to continue to probably have to take on that load um, unless the state, meanwhile, back in the state, are we going to get more rural aid and can we guarantee it more than one year so we can use it as a budget offset? You know, and again, projecting that out, we're using ESSER when you really aren't supposed to be using it for budget offset, but most schools are because that's the reality of mm -hmm. Western Mass schools. Sure. Um, you know, will rural aid be able to increase and maybe that'll take up some of this ESSER um, fill, backfill in a couple of years? Maybe. You know, we, we'll be open to that if that's the case. Anything else? Uh, just a quick um, quick red flag was the um, when you say you had a special ed designation for a given student, um, the uh, kindergarten was it pre K or is it kind of kindergarten? It's pre K. Pre K. They committed no. There's no charge. There's no so I guess the question is: Be um, who makes the determination as to the special ed needs of that given student? So as part of and Chris, I may need to start thinking about this. Um, as part of so we have an early we have an early childhood director Kim McCarthy, um, and there's also um, a service out there that. Looks for students. Um, right, right. Reach, the, reach. the Reach program looks for three year olds, and um, it's basically their job as child find to find students who may have extended needs and such. And so they become they're assessed at that point. Um, and if they qualify for an IEP, they're mm -hmm. encouraged to enroll in public preschool. So this Reach program is this a private organization or is this public? I believe it's publicly funded. Publicly funded the state. So their job, irrespective of your requests, they're, they're, they're looking at birth records and... Um, no, you might be referred by a pediatrician. Or could be referred by a pediatrician. Yes, ma'am. I used to work for so I can talk to you about that a little bit. Perfect. Yeah. So, which is a, uh, it's uh, ServiceNet is the vendor, and they do the state money. Their job is to work with children who have significant needs. They do have a pretty high uh, scope when they look at kids. They're looking at kids. They don't allow just any kid into their program. They do have a testing program um, that involves EDOT, um, speech and cognition, all that kind of stuff is tested. A lot of these kids um, are coming in with some medical issues or significant delays that really do kind of warn uh, mm -hmm. us to help as they turn three. They they are birth to three, and we're we started. Okay, I guess just a general question would be: as long as they're being assessed and not gaming the system, that I think that was a question most Good. people would ask. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Some of this early childhood stuff is COVID driven, you know, these kids didn't get to play with their friends or walked around everywhere with a mask on. And, you know, now we're going to pay the price. These, there's a whole bunch of kids that are coming along that have issues. Yeah. And so the positive side, so looking at preschool, you know, you know, we even talked about it in, in some of our school committee meetings about universal preschool that, you know, when does, you know, Eastern Mass with the more money that they have, they're doing a lot of universal people. They're just making it free for everybody. Because, it's just, you know, the studies show that if you can get early intervention, you can get students off IEPs earlier. You can make huge gains in those early years. And without those early year gains, you're going to be paying for it longer term. Well, you know, as they say, like, you don't, you know, sure. all the way through and be more productive. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. after they graduate in society yeah. and so forth. So it's good that we're finding them. It's good that we have a good program to do it, but there's a financial reality to it, as you're saying. Sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Where were we? So we're presenting you with the, the idea on that. I think um, I'm speaking now for school committee. They wanted to get your folks' thoughts on this one. That's basically how we stopped our last yeah. discussion was it's a little bit more than whatever. 
although we didn't have the cherry sheet, so it's a lot easier on the, it's a lot easier on a new folks to say, you know, Frontier's gonna come in with a, a plus, right. um, or it's a minus, depending on how you like your books. Um, so we didn't have that many, we really had that information at the time, so it's a lot easier as well. But Frontier was still coming with an assessment. This would be a, probably a heavier discussion because education would be taking a bigger portion of all of its sure. body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, look, you know, you guys got to play with the numbers. You, you guys live that. And we're certainly not in a position um, to balk at any of that. Although, had we had it five days ago, who knows? But um, at this point in time, no. Um, so, um, are you good with, because does anybody else have any questions for Superintendent Desto or Shelley regarding what's been, what has come out here? Um, everybody on here is muted, you do know that. Oh, they're all muted on here. Okay. Uh, has anybody asked uh, to get in? No. Um, they can raise their hands if somebody okay. likes to speak. Okay. Okay. I, I do have I do a follow-up question about okay. Choice. Okay. Um, what are we thinking we're gonna carry forward if we're spending the 254 E? I turned off the page. Yeah, so what are we no, taking in? What do we think we're gonna carry forward? So we 254 includes um some wiggle room for us in transportation costs related to special education. I don't think we'll quite hit that number, um, but it's in there based on a $32,000 cost for special ed transportation. Um, so that number could come down slightly. Waitley brings in just over 200,000 roughly for revenue and choice. So we are expending a little bit more if we were to fully spend that transportation cost. The projection for the end of next year is around 160,000 in the revolving fund. We'd like that to be a little bit higher. We'd like to carry one year in arrears at least, so that if we did have some, especially special education costs unforeseen, and you know, if you have one student, you have to place out of district. That's a very sure. Bill. We have lived that in the past. Um, that's one other thing. So, Darius, is your question the related to whether we think 4.4.12 is the right number? Is that what your question was? I guess it's more to see how we're getting to that number. You know, it's not, I kind of feel like when we're, we're using um, non, like we're using revenues that's going to be not revenue. non renewable right. revenues to offset a budget. No, that Everybody better understand that we're doing that because you're going to say, you know, if you do it for two years, you go, what are you even doing for two years? That's a big budget because um, that funding source is going to end, right. you know, and so, and, you know, at that point, um, you know, if we were if we were carrying extra, you know, it'd be now would be the time to start looking about kind of um, you know reducing that. But really, our budget is salary driven, and so um, you know that's so. I think it is the right move to do. And I'm just that's what we want to be is really transparent on. I also remember I was just kind of saying that before involving laughing is that if Frontier came in at you know meeting you know a hundred thousand dollars as well. It's going to be much harder to go with town and swall, and then we're, it'd be a heavier conversation. That's why I said uh, the Jerry sheets came out that we said, like, Well, it's actually a good year to have this during this adjustment. Yeah, if, if this was if that was the increase for Frontier, and that was the increase for Tech, I would that would hurt a lot. Right. Yeah, um, it would hurt. Can I say two things? Um, and related to your question, we have had towns say to us, We can't afford 4.2. Yeah, right. And so then we have had to go back to the drawing board. So that is the feedback I think I'm looking for. Of, mm -hmm. You know, is this a palatable number? Does mm -hmm. this fit within your budgets considering all the other departments? That's that's an interesting statement because at this point in time, we don't have a budget. And we don't really know. You see, you know, we're here on at the beginning of March and we collect everybody's <laughs> budgets and then sometime by the end of April, we take a look at it all, but your numbers are already in there and very difficult to pull those numbers out unless we want to get on town floor and say, we're not passing that, we're passing this. This is what we think you should pass. <laughs> and that's hard to justify. That's hard to justify, just hard to do. 
and it's not fun. We have done it. Um, so knowing that you guys go through the numbers the way you do and hearing your explanations and all that, it makes it far more palatable than if it was just a number. Um, so we appreciate that. Um, but your idea of moving town meetings is helpful as well. But you got to get everybody to do it. Yeah. Because Frontier, I mean, and I, if folks don't understand the Frontier dilemma this month, mm -hmm. is that you know we didn't know when we were going to get the cherry sheets. I have, right. to, help, I have yeah. to post a public meeting for the, and it wasn't the thing I'm saying, but the, the whole right. wondering why Frontier's going to do their entire budget in one week. Yeah. We didn't get the assessments until you know, we got them last week and then officially, I think, came out today. Um, and you know, I got to post two weeks in advance for a public hearing. Right. And Frontier's budget has to be done 45 days before the first town meeting, which means the deadline is March 11th. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So saying that we're going to get the budget, we needed a couple of days to look at the numbers. It, you know, it unfortunately came out a week prior to that, but we didn't know that when we were making the schedule. So that's why we're inviting everybody to come to Frontier's public hearing. They have a meeting on gotcha. um, Tuesday, mm -hmm. and then they're going to vote the budget on Wednesday with a backup plan of also having a meeting on Friday if there's controversy. Um, yeah, just... If we roll ahead a year, okay, and for all the towns were to have their town meetings towards the end of May, that would relieve some of the crunch. The regional agreement says 45 days. Well, the right state law says 45 days. Okay. Well, we have commitments from at least three of the other towns um, to do that. So we're still waiting on Sunderland to see what. They're the one that's the toughest to move. They're the second meeting. Yeah, Deerfield's been talking about moving because they agree with Deer, you. Deerfield yeah. wants to go. Con, Conway's already gone. Our select board um, sees the, wi the wisdom in, in that. And um, so anyway, next year, you know, this hopefully that crunch won't be. There. So um, just to um, um, to get back to nuts and bolts. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, and show you one. We didn't talk about so going back to that first page where that where we talked about the increases in the second set of bullets for the twenty percent separation cost, twenty percent twenty thousand dollars separation cost. Yeah, so that's in the budget. And while we're paying for it with ESSER money, that could also be paid outside of the budget. Meaning, meaning we've had other towns within our district use free cash, ARPA funds, another funding source to cover the retirement payout so that it doesn't hit the budget as an increase. Mm -hmm. I think there's pros and cons to both. If it hits the budget now, the school has that built in as a placeholder and we never have to have that conversation again about finding $20,000. Mm -hmm. However, Wheatley has the smallest population of staff. You're not typically having someone retire every single year. That's true. So it might be something that if the town had funds available, consider pulling out. Twenty thousand is you know one point oh nine percent or something like that. It would reduce that to four point one pretty easily if there were another funding source to cover that. Okay, three point one. Three point one. I'm sorry, three point one. Just pulling it off. Thank you. All right. Well, that's good. Um, We'll take that under advisement for sure. Um, are you are you set with all your numbers and the explanation as to why things? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, can we get to the uh, the school itself a little bit? I I know there was talk about uh, needs, capital needs at school. There are no. Yes. No. no. In my two projects. Yeah. Projects at the school that need to be done, flooring. Um, yes, no. Are you gonna? Yeah, the, the capital plan thing just finalized the recommendations tonight, so we'll be sending those to the. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Just, yeah. Capital plan. That's fine. Of the <coughs> of the budget that's currently before us for Wheatley Elementary School, what percentage is staff? Total staff salaries. Yeah, that's in your in that report I gave you as well. One of those pie chart. Right? Yes, I saw the I saw the percentage in the pie chart. There you go. Um, so the second pie chart, the wage percentage by category, eighty point four six percent is salaries and wages. Eighty point four. One point five, almost one point six million dollars. And then you can see the breakdown there that nearly seventy percent 
and the behavioral staff, which is anyone who falls under the teacher or the IA contract. Mm -hmm. So you see, we have a lot invested in the staff here at Whaley Elementary School. Um, so I just have, you know, a few questions in regards to that. Um, first one being, does do all teaching staff have their master's degree? Yes. Yes. In order to be certified, you have to have a master's degree or get your master's degree within five years of applying for It's nice to know what we're paying for. So that's good. Uh, currently, all teaching staff have their um, are they up to date on continuing education? That's good. What's your average class size? About. Do you think it's too much? Do you think it's too little? Do you think it's a problem? Or, no. You know, I think we're very fortunate with our class sizes. The average is probably 16, 17. Okay. We got our, our current kindergarten is the big class. There are yeah. 20 students in kindergarten. Good. That's actually good, right? Okay. Um, regarding curriculum. Have there been any significant changes this year from last year, and will there be any this year going into next year? Yeah, currently there are two committees, uh, district-wide committees, to select new curriculum resources for ELA and for math. Um, we're at a place where all the schools in the district are doing something a little bit different, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it serves us better if we're all on the same page. Um, in terms of professional development, when we get everyone together on a Friday earlier, we include everyone using the same resources. Um, it's more effective for professional development. Yep. Um, so there are two committees, and they've gone through a pretty rigorous process through guessing, um, first to learn how to, to go about the process of selecting curriculum. Um, and they meet constantly. Um, I'm like another full time job for a lot of people. And the committees are uh, a representation of classroom teachers, special ed teachers from all four schools, all four elementary schools, um, with the goal of choosing a new math curriculum, a new MLA curriculum by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Implementation is another issue because it would, it would be very challenging to implement a brand new ELA and math at the same time. So this committee will also work on an application. For this year, there are a few new things that have been piloted. We piloted a program called Being a Writer and also Written Wisdom. Um, and that was so that some people could speak to how these programs are working. When we're investigating which one we want going forward, it's a couple of possibilities. Um, we also, in our K1 and 2, we've been using something called Foundation, um, which is in response to some, some real gaps we're seeing as a result of having our youngest learners at mm -hmm. home in the middle of kindergarten. Yep. Um, and not really back for a real school year for a, a year and a half. So we noticed some some real gaps in the time and the So All that right. will stay. The being a writer and with wisdom are dependent on whatever the curriculum we can provide. We'll be waiting to hear. Okay. Thank you. Um, you know, things come in the news. There have been terrible things that happen in many schools across the nation. Um, is this school safe? I believe it is very safe. I just in, in preparing for this, I just jotted down a few notes. We have a new surveillance system that was put in last year. Um, it had a very old, probably original to the building surveillance system. Um, our door buzzer wasn't working properly, and so we have new cameras that, that see more things. Um, we didn't used to have one that could see out to the field, and I felt like that was a big miss. Mm -hmm. So we now have that. Um, we have regular fire drills and lockdown drills. We have regular four town safety meetings, um, very frequent communication with the Wavy PD. Um, this year we had updated in-service training for staff regarding lockdown protocols. It was delivered by Mass State Police and Franklin County Sheriff's Department. Um, and we have a school-based crisis team that meets regularly to mm -hmm. review protocols and roles and to run through different scenarios. 
hopefully we'll never. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that is a sort of an unofficial safety measure is that because of our size and the nature of weight link, it's very clear when there's someone on our campus that does not belong there. Yeah. Um, so that, that really well, we'll is helpful. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, okay, that's great. Um, I mean, it's good. Yeah. Um, I have to ask this. Is critical race theory being taught here? Okay. I've been asked by more than one person. Oh, not me. Um, also, is there an initiative to eliminate homework? Yes, we have. We and what is what is that all about? We're not eliminated. Um, there's a great deal of research that shows that there is not much of a benefit to do homework in an elementary school. Um, one of the things that does penalize is the children who don't have someone at home to do homework with them. Um, and again, that combined with the fact that there's, we're not seeing a, a big benefit to it, what we want is our students to devote time every day at home to reading. And at a certain grade, um, third grade and up, also to be friends and family in space of math class. And I think we were the biggest thing to the left hand in terms of performance. When you get into fifth and sixth grade, when we do some project work, it's because we're able to do it independently at home, as well as thinking of being and writing and writing and writing and spending thought in school already, it's going to create a whole lot Okay. Well, this isn't the place to debate that, but, but it is a value question. and. People, especially the people that are watching, want to know what they're paying for. Okay, um, last but um, not least from, from me, um, I had an opportunity to take a look at um, the teacher contracts uh, for both uh, front, Frontier as well as Whitley Elementary. And there was one line in there that stuck out to me, and, that, and I quote, all teachers entering the employment of the school committee Dot, 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 may be placed on a proper step of salary at the school. It was the beginning of that. All teachers entering the employment of the school committee. So the, the teachers, instructional staff, are employed by the town and by the school committee. So my question is, when you have a hire, when you place an ad in the paper, when you bring in res resumes to place a teacher, do you include those people? Why? So I believe the, if you go to the legal side of it, I believe that the uh, Education Act of um, 1993 took that away from the school committee and put it in the hands of the administration. So they hire the administrators to run the school, which includes the hiring, firing, and discipline. So why why is that line because in, they're the employer. in the contract? The agreement is with the employer. So they hire me. So the board, we're a CEO. I'm the CEO. The board doesn't hire all the employees below. They hire the CEO, the CFO. Right. And that's basically what the school committee does. Mm -hmm. And then we're in charge of while they they're doing their their they're signing the, um, you know, the, the, the association agreement, the contract, you know what I mean? Um, you know, they're deciding the, the pay scales and all those kind of things. And they're leaving, we're into the operations of hiring mm -hmm. the people. That's just how it's, that's how we would set up. They okay. get on a very non-legal way of saying it, but that's yep. kind of yep. um, Okay. Um, I won't beat a dead horse any longer. Um, you can put this thing to bed. Any questions what's the, that uh, that I haven't exhausted? Um, when's the uh, do you know the date of the public hearing for this yet? It's the 16th, 15th, 15th, 15th. of March. Yeah. And we welcome whoever likes to come to those. Too. What time is it going to be at? 6, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. on the 15th? Not a four o'clock or, or an 8 a.m. For us retirees, gotcha. Is that after the coffee meetup or before? 
There's coffee at this at these. Yeah. Yeah. You can just stop it. What kind? It's still coffee. Donuts. 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 Yeah. You gotta put up your budget a little bit. Well, it's right on, pick you up. And money comes out of our pockets. Ooh. Our meaning the residents. <laughs> no. Chrissy buys stuff. All right. And I buy muffins. Not gonna be great time. guy. Thank you very much. Thank thank you all for coming. Um, appreciate all the information. And I look, we look forward to seeing you on uh, on the seventh for the uh, for frontier for frontier. I'm sure you say it correctly. Yeah, correct. Frontiers on the seventh is the public hearing. The eighth will be the budget for for the six million. And they they're at frontier at the media center. Media center. Media, media center. And our all our meetings now are on Google Meet. There's no more live streaming where you can't get part of it. Okay. I was asked by another committee, like, we have the accent link to be on. We'll be given a Google Meet just like, um, yeah. Um, actually, let, I um, I spoke to FCAT because I was looking for meetings and I couldn't find them. And they told me that, that, that the schools had uploaded them to their own site. Correct. So he went in there and he put them on to the FCAT site. I mean, they're there now. So he, he wasn't sure where they were going. But if you go to, for any of our meetings, agendas, and recordings, if you go to the, to the front, not the front, not the school website, but the central office website. Yeah, go to yeah. school committees, and there's a link that says agendas, meeting, and recordings. Right there. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, continuing on with the meeting. Brian, I lost the agenda. No, I just found it. That's 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 it. Okay, that's it. That's it. Um, Thank you. Um, see you guys. Good see you. Yeah. See you. Uh, have a good night. So I I have the doctor seeing the Franklin Tech budget book. Oh, um, yeah. So well, it was it was not sent out today. Um, well, that's a very difficult budget to, to, say to have any oversight on. Um, but the way it's going, you know, there's, there's certainly a gravitational pull from eighth grade at Frontier up to, you know, Franklin Tech, and then you can see it happening. Yeah. And I do going to do it. When I, when I, I'm torn because I think, oh, great, they're adding this aviation mechanic, you know, yeah. opportunity. And then yeah. it's, well, <laughs> You think about it from the money side, and what's that going to cost? You know, oh my you gosh, more, you got to buy planes now. More, oh, yeah. you know, more <laughs> students are going to tech, and presumably less are going to Frontier, but we still have to pay the yeah the big chunk for Frontier. And yep. it's yep. you know, Whaley's now considered by the state, you know, a wealthy community, wealthy community. Yeah, so the cost per pupil is a little higher, even though we have less people, yep. even though we have less students. So, um, I see dollar signs when I hear that. Um, I'm not putting a value judgment on it. I'm just seeing an increase in, you know, in, in dollars going that in that direction. So whether it's good or bad, I, I think yeah, I see dollar signs going in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Our legislators may have seen a thing that was signed up the phone. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Determine. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. I second. We'll take a, a vote. Aye. Dan. Aye. Aye. Jim. Paul, yes. Um, you can still say. Okay. Uh, uh, who's at home? Brenda. Brenda? She went to bed. She's muted. She's, she's still muted. on. She's muted. Okay. If she's good. All right. Okay. That's it. All right. So we got that down.